Hey, you're having a lot of success with those Evos this summer. Yeah, we're making the science of speed come to life. We're selling these things like Taylor Swift tickets. Yeah, well, we want to make a lightweight bike that'll kill your Evo. We made that in the lab, and it's aero, and it's ours, and it's lightweight. Give it back. Like, like we did that first, and it's the best. It's like 15 pounds. Okay, fine. I'll make a bike that's even better than yours. Yeah, what are you going to do? Add a $4,000 paint job to it and say it's better? Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, this video is it's about a week late, and I apologize. I was out riding my Mondo, my 2022. It's, it's more like a 2020 uh, model, but this is um, Trekamonda SLR direct mount rim brake. You know, you guys have seen this bike all over my channel. Um, it just shows how I'm lazy to feature other bikes in my videos. But um, today, I want to talk about the bike that. Uh, I haven't really talked about in this channel before, and I think that there is no better time to really talk about it than right now. Yeah, and the reason, you know, a lot of people might say, you know, oh, you're being a hater, and I'm not because um, in every single, and I just want to wrap this I've ridden a Lab 71. I haven't actually ridden a Gen 8 SLR yet. Um, which I really want to do and I'm gonna do I promise you guys and I'm gonna tell you exactly what it's like but on paper the lab 71 is better in every single way now I'm gonna put a little asterisk on this so Trek you know I was looking at my cheat sheet they claim and you need a cheat sheet because everybody's so full of it about making these claims you know above whatever speed you're gonna save 77 seconds per hour so that's that's a lot of time so that's over a minute but if I take out my cheat sheet again they don't really here so what is it what is it even compared to so that's compared to yeah so it's 77 seconds per hour faster than a Monda and 320 grams lighter than the Gen 7 Madone now they don't say how much heavier it is than the last Amanda, which I actually rode and I wasn't a huge fan of because the H1 and a half, they combined the H1 and the H2 geometry and I just didn't like it. It felt, it didn't feel enough, it didn't feel great, it felt uncomfortable and not comfortable at the same time. Like H2 is, is the best I think and you know that's why I really liked them, the Domine that I had. But, you know, the issue is you're stuck with the same geometry. Now, if you like it, it works for you, that's great. I'm not here to say that that's a bad thing. But in every single measurable way, the Lab 71 is better. It's lighter. I've weighed the bike. Um, believe in a 54, it's 15 pounds dead. And it's like every single person I talk to, someone I know, has a Lab 71. And then I know another guy um, who I actually sold the ALR frame to, he's getting a Lab 71. And everybody says it feels like cheating. They're like, this bike is so fast, and it really is amazing how light and how aerodynamic it is. Um, and the compliance built in, now it's stiff. Um, I have another friend who rides a high mod, doesn't own a car. Dude daily drives a high mod too. And he just says, this thing is insane. Uh, he has 28 uh, millimeter tires on it and, and rips. And I was riding behind him at one point. It literally looked like a Lamborghini Huracan. I was like, wow. <laughs> it's like a Huracan Evo. But that, the reason I bring it up and why I think Trek is copying Cannondale is because of the bottle cages. Like, look at that. Like, you can't tell me they're not copying the cool, which Cannondale's cages actually, or, or bottles rather, hold um, more than um, a standard bottle, which I thought was pretty cool. But yeah, if you're comparing apples for apples, this lab came out a year ago and Trek just dropped this bike. It's less options for the consumers and small, medium, large. Um, you know, during the, um, you know, when we were all drinking a Corona Light a few years ago, um, I recommended somebody to get a Canyon versus a Specialized. Now, I'm usually all over for support your local bike shop, but during that time, I don't think they could get a Specialized. So I'm like, go get a Canyon, because that's what's available. Um, it was part of the reason. But the thing is, now, I mean, part of the reason I give Canyon so much crap is because one, they don't support bike shops, and two, they don't have a whole lot of sizes. 
I don't think that's great. If you look at Pinarello, they give you so many sizes, and that's one of the reasons they're such a premium brand, because they give the consumer a lot of options. Um, but Trek, like, I get how it's a similar amount, because medium large is like 56, medium is like 54, which I saw they're putting 170 millimeter cranks, run 54, they're doing 175 and a half millimeter cranks, so that's cool, they're going down, realizing that, that height plays into crank length, and that's a whole bike fit thing, another topic, so that was pretty cool to see. They're trying to copy what uh, Candil has done, and I, in my opinion, they aren't necessarily, I mean, I guess you can put a baguette of bread, like, through a hole, you know, like on the Gen 7, so... I mean, that's pretty cool. I thought the Gen 7, you know, I thought that was pretty neat because that's its own thing and it came in a whole range of sizes. But, you know, on the Gen 8, I mean, you're, you don't have an Amanda anymore, which I like. I, I like that platform. I love that Specialized came out with the Athos, which is kind of like this style of bike. I, I think if you can't get one of these and you want the closest thing to it, probably an Athos would be. Although I think this bike is actually more comfortable than an Athos. I know that's that's a hot take right there, but yeah, I think this is way more comfortable than the Athos. Um, but this this is the real deal. If you really want a real amazing track bike, climbing bike, buy this frame. I think you can still get it and build it up. Like it's it's insane. Like you'll you'll love this thing. So I'm not dissing Trek as a company. I'm not saying any, they made bad bikes. Period. I'm just saying that bike. No. Um, if you want a brand new bike from Trek, go buy a Domine Gen 4. Um, great bike. If you want, in my opinion, maybe even a better bike, go get a BMC Road Machine. Though that's a sick bike too. And um, so comfortable, and you don't have any ISO speed maintenance to worry about. It's one of my most viewed videos, the front ISO speed. Everybody had that knocking. But um, not anymore uh, with the Road Machine. The Road Machine is a great bike to check out. And Roubaix is great, but Road Machine is less maintenance than Roubaix. And man, we're talking about <laughs> talking about the new Madone, and we're talking about BMC Road Machine, uh, Candale Lab 71. It really depends what you want. If you want a climbing bike, all rounder, and an aero bike, you live in a flat area, from in Florida, um, go Lab 71. Uh, thing is sick. If you want like an aero disc bike, that's your cup of tea. But yep. Yeah, uh, better on paper in every single possible way. I'm gonna go ride to Gen 8 Madone and I'll be back. Um, I'll make a part two to this video, but right now I'm a little bit not very impressed. But um, let me know what y'all think. And stay